Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Lambert. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asking the question of historicity, whether Jesus existed historically or not, for quite some time on Myth Vision. You know, I was a hardcore mythicist for a long time, and now I'm like, okay, taking the question more seriously, saying, could there be a guy? And I lean that there could, but I could be wrong. I, I say that as someone who's not dogmatic. <laughs> I'm talking to Dr. Richard Carrier today, and uh, welcome to Myth Vision once again. Just yeah, I'm glad to be here. I wanted to like let everyone know. I saw that you do online courses. You've wrote peer-reviewed material on the subject of whether Jesus existed. There's probably not a prominent historicist in history you haven't read on the subject matter. I haven't read nearly as much as you. I say that to humble myself and realize maybe I'm missing something. And I say that honestly. Yeah, I, it's uh, it would be <laughs> it was a six year postdoc research project that so you know that I was paid uh, uh, pennies to do, but still, <laughs> uh, you know, it was a lot of work uh, doing this, and I wouldn't have done it uh, had it not been for uh, people wanting to see the research done. And I definitely haven't done the research that you have. So to act like I know or be confident in a historical Jesus in any way without really un lifting all the rocks, I, I kind of want to say I'm agnostic, really, ultimately, the though it makes sense that there could have been a guy in my head. Yeah, and you know, uh, in my formal book, the academic peer-reviewed monograph challenging the historicity of Jesus, that actually my upper bound margin of error is one in three chance that there right. was, right? So it's, it's definitely plausible. Uh, and it's you, you can also talk credibly about like, well, if there was, what is the most credible version of the historical Jesus? There's really a, a scale. Like, there's a lot of plausible. They're all contradictory, but there's a lot of plausible versions of historical Jesus that are all, that all fit the evidence, right? It, so it's just a question of what is more likely, what is most likely. And, uh, and that's, that's the real challenge. But I, so the thing is like this, the, the, the thing with the course, uh, so I teach this course on the historicity of Jesus and, um, the goal of the course and what I, the way I structure it is, uh, I have the best case for historicity and the best case for, against and then I want the students to try and poke holes in either side, right? Like just have all, get all the information once you have the information that you need. And that's what I do is I, I select the information that's most important to make these judgments. And then if the students need more information to make a judgment about something, they, they ask in class. And that's one of the cool things about the class is like we go through like, well, what about this? What about that? And so on. And then, we, and then I can give them information. I can give them even bibliographies if they want to go further into different things. Uh, and so we explore these different op options and you really try to like beat the evidence from every angle that we can. Right. Uh, and the benefit of, and I often, I encourage historicists to take the course because I, I don't necessarily assume the course is going to convince you. That's not the point that the point is by the time you finish the course, you will know way more stuff about why this debate makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then you will actually be more competent, actually more skilled and knowledgeable about how to even defend historicity. It, Cause you'll know which arguments really don't hold up and therefore which ones you really need to focus on uh, and, 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 and really challenge. And then also you'll learn like the best arguments for mythicism. So I don't teach the bad ones. So like if whatever is probably not taught in my course, is probably not a good method for arguing for mythicism either. So, uh, so you gain all these skills, and so even for historicists, you learn what the best case against your position is, so you can steel man it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's I think crucial for anyone who wants to defend historicity as well. Uh, and so I, I heavily encourage historicists to come in and and engage with the work and so on. It, it's not just a rah rah propaganda thing for uh, for mythicism. It is definitely an exploration, hitting all of the key points. Uh, and then <clears throat> so that we can figure out, does this make sense? And what does make sense uh, in right. context? And that's the most important thing is getting that context because we can't anachronistically just assume we understand how the ancient world worked. And so that's what the course is about. Uh, and uh, it's one of my most popular courses. And so I, I do get students in it. Now that I'm teaching it every month, uh, the classes tend to be small because people spread out mm. throughout the year. But, uh, but I, I don't care. I don't care how, if it's a lot of people or a few people. Um, it's always a good course. So it's, uh, I'd it's like to make hope. a plug. Yeah. In light of this, I want to let everybody know that is watching myth vision. You guys have watched my journey and you say, Oh, Derek's definitely leaning a historicist angle. That doesn't mean I'm dogmatic. Right. So I don't, I don't line myself up with Bart Ehrman and his anti-mythicist position. Um, I'm not 
that kind of guy. You guys know I'm no expert. I'm not an academic. Maybe Bart sees something I don't. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm being honest. Like, I really yeah, want to know right. what can we know and how, because the, the evidence is not the best in the world. And so, like, to try and say it one way or the other is like, eh. yeah. And so, I want to join you, which I went ahead and I threw you. Um, it's 50 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. $49, $49 for each course any month. I teach 10. <clears throat> 10 different courses in both philosophy and history every month. Uh, and they're all subjects I'm published in, in one form or another. And, uh, and they all function kind of the same way, but, uh, but it's $49 a class. It's, it's really simple. It's one month. It's study at your own pace. Uh, do as much or as little work as you want. Like, so right. it's, it's basically, uh, that's how it works, but it's, it's basically organized reading challenge questions, conversations, and then all the, it's basically the opportunity, a month long Q and a with an expert. So you can, you can ask me all the questions you want and you'll get like a detailed answer, possibly even bibliographies if you want them, you know, that, that kind of, so you're basically buying my attention for a month essentially. And I love, and it. then also the concentration of focusing and I'm telling you what to focus on, what you need to know, and then making it as efficient as possible for you to get that info. And so you can discuss it. This is great because next month I'm going to be seeing you in person in California. And so I think it will be wonderful if I'm also taking courses from you, or at least this course specifically, I'm planning on. Yeah. Especially this one makes the most sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm going to be doing in-person interviews. And for like all my Patreon members who ask questions, I get to ask them to you and record them in California with Dennis McDonald. Like we're going to be all hanging out. Yeah. Right. So two it's days. Gonna be awesome. It's going to be cool. Yeah. And yeah. But I wanted to say for all those who are watching, if you've had this question, if you want to join in this next month, I'm taking the course. Take it with me. Come take it with me. Let's let's check out what Dr. Carrier has to say. If you totally disagree with Carrier, even more reason yeah. to know the nook and cranny of everything he has against what you think. And at the end of the day, we can do a live stream after this month is up where we'll have Dr. Carrier come on live on Myth Vision. You guys can ask questions, you know, we'll have fun. We'll have fun. And I want to yeah. learn from you. I know there's stuff that I'm missing or it'll be good to have you, someone who leans mythicist, take the jabs at historicist in a, in a way that allows us to really like think heavy and hard about how we can ask these questions from the historicist angle and to see your responses. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I want to see, uh, ultimately, I mean, I've wanted to see this for a while, and it hasn't happened yet. But I'm waiting for an actually a peer-reviewed defense of historicity, like a book that focuses just on that question and does it well so that I can tell people, like, here's the best defense of historicity, here's the best defense against, uh, so you can compare the two books. I want that. Uh, and I think th going through this course will help people start to understand what it is we need in in that kind of the best defense of historicity and i so yeah i would love to have students both pro and con come in uh ask all the questions they want and it'll also inspire you like you mentioned you might be able to get some stuff uh live with me on camera me and dennis mcdonald met possibly even uh, uh coming uh, next month so uh so yeah it's september starts september 1st so yeah everybody go in go to my website richardcarrier.info there's right up the top the menu that says take classes That'll just follow the links through there and you'll get uh, the instructions for how to register and join us. Uh, I would love it. It would be great to have a bunch of people in uh, really picking this apart and trying to figure it out. Me too. I'm, I definitely want to do this because I also want to show how one should be. I'm, I'm trying to be a, kind of that role model, so to speak, figure to let people know, like, don't be dogmatic. Like the evidence is not that. Yeah, you, right. You've been really good at that, I think. Uh, and that's also people forget that that's also what I do too. Right? Like people assume I'm just like every other dogmatic mythicist. Right. No, I actually like. There's a possibility there was Jesus one in three. Like I said, you know, uh, I think it's somewhere between one in twelve thousand and one in three. So I think it's very uncertain. But that's the point: is the evidence is so poor and so problematic that you can't have a certainty in this either way. Uh, and so, so that's what you just have to wrestle with that. Like a lot of people are uncomfortable with ambiguity and uncertainty, but no, you just got to get comfortable with it. So it's really just a question of, of, I think, uh, pulling people out of their dogmatism and then letting them figure out how can they move this probability around? Like, would, like, where should this probability really be? How confident should I be in either side and why? And so that's part of what we teach in the course. So excited. Literally look, if you guys will join, join with me. Uh, if you're not a Patreon member, obviously I'd love to see you guys be there because you could private message me and we can constantly communicate, but join the course. And we're going to do this, which this coming up month, September, 
That's right. So it'll the course will start September one. There's no scheduled events, so you can come in and come and go whenever you want. It's all uh, you know bulletin board style. It's uh, Google Groups. Um, so so you don't you know there's no time limit or anything like that. But you, but it does have like weekly assignments. So like readings and challenge questions and discussion and stuff. So uh, so if you got to knock out, you got to keep on schedule with the, with the four weeks, but you can work as hard or as not. You can go in there and just be lazy and just watch uh, or ask, throw out questions and things like that. Uh, it, it's better, obviously, if you do the readings right. uh, thoroughly, because that's kind of the point is to focus on uh, which things you should read and why. But, uh, but yeah, so it starts September 1st uh, and you can register anytime starting now. And um, and when uh, they follow the registration instructions and then everybody will get an invite a day or two before September 1 and then they can all pour in and start working on the course. Let's do it. I'm excited. Let me know if you guys want to do that. I mean, I'll see you there. Hopefully you guys sign up. I did sign up already and I'm going to be taking the course September 1st and we're going to get that whole month out of the way. At the end, we'll be talking about, you know, what we've figured out, like what we think about the topic. And of course, I'll have Dr. Carrier join us again and we will do a live, hopefully, where we can talk to you guys and, you know, just let the world kind of hear like what what the thinking process is here. So thank you so much, Dr. Carrier, and go support him. Yeah. Not just this, like this is a way that, you know, you're not in an academic setting where me meaning like politically how academics, you know, make you think you have to do this and that you, you go where you want and where, you know, the evidence kind of leads you without mm -hmm. people having to uh, steer you. That's um, right. Yeah. But this is a way to support you by also taking your courses. So, yeah, absolutely. And it's an opportunity to benefit from my knowledge. You know, I've, I've, work so hard at gathering all this stuff. I love imparting it uh, and helping people figure out how best to defend things. So I, for example, I do the counter apologetics course, which is everything I've learned debating Christians. So I can like give you clues on how and tips about how to better argue and uh, debunk Christianity and fight against Christian apologetics and things like that. Right. Uh, so any one of my courses are like that. Like, and, and I have things like in philosophy as well. I have like the science and philosophy of free will weirdly one of my it's actually my favorite course and it's one of the most popular courses again uh because this is a subject people want to talk about but i see it as a, an excellent touchstone where you can learn everything about philosophy everything from aesthetics to politics to metaphysics to epistemology and semantics like all, all aspects of philosophy touch on this one subject so you can actually start to like learn how to be a good philosopher just by tackling this one subject uh, and so I do that with all, with all of my courses. They all like, well, you, we'll come out of them with, with more skills and more knowledge and, and uh, that you'll be able to be more effective at the things you want to do and argue. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you there. Thank you, Dr. Carrier.